Hey guys, um, today we are reading the universe, all about the cosmos, galaxies, stars, planets, and more by Seymour Simon. We are going to use this book to practice how to figure out unfamiliar books. Um, this is a reference nonfiction book, so let's get started. I do apologize for my voice. It's really bad and probably hard to listen to. <laughs> So, I'm sorry about that. Okay, let's get started. The universe is everything that exists now and in the past. It includes the books you are reading and the ground beneath your feet, the animals and plants, oceans and continents, planets, stars and galaxies, and the vast reaches of space. You tru are truly part of the universe. Every atom, every particle within you is billions of years old. I want to go ahead and stop, stop because we have a couple of our vocabulary words here. The first vocabulary word that we see is um, vast. So let's start by trying our glossary strategy and see if vast is in the glossary. Okay, I look, it's in alphabetical order, no vast. So, I'm going to come back and I'm going to reread this sentence to see if I can figure out the meaning. So, it says that it includes everything you are reading, the ground beneath your feet, the animals, plants, oceans, continents, planets, stars, galaxies, and the vast reaches of space. So, as I read the vast reaches of space, I think that vast seems to be a word that means great in size. So, pause right now and write great in size, and we used the context clue strategy to figure out the meaning. Okay, another word that we have on our chart that also is on this page are atoms and particles. So let's go ahead and work on those. Again, we wanna first check out the glossary, atom and particle. Okay, let's come back. When I go to the glossary, I do see atom, and it says an atom is the smallest particle of an element that can exist on its own. I see particle, a very small unit of matter or energy. So I see both are very small. So let's go back and reread the sentence so that we can um, make sure we understand it. Every atom, every particle within you is billions of years old. So I think the author is trying to make the point that every ounce of our being is billions of years old. So let's make sure we have added the um, definitions to our chart because for atom and particle, we actually use the glossary to um, figure out the meaning so we can add that under that column. And then for atom, you can pause this right now and copy the definition for atom and particle, the smallest particle of an element, a very small unit of matter or energy. So pause and write those into your chart. Okay, great work. Let's keep reading. If you wanted to write your complete address on a letter to show where you live, it might look like this. Your name, street, city, or town, zip code country, planet Earth, solar system, Milky Way galaxy, the universe. There's no zip code for the universe, of course, but there, if there is one, it might be, this is a symbol, which is the symbol for infinity. So let's start by thinking about everything we've already read on this page. It talks about how big the universe is, how it goes on and on. So let's reread the first sentence and the last sentence of paragraph one to help us with infinity. The universe is everything that exists now and in the past. Then the last sentence is, every atom, every particle within you is billions of years old. So if I think about that, if the universe is everything that exists and is billions of years old, what could infinity mean? I think that from what we've read, I can determine that infinity mean, means forever. So let's add infinity to our chart. Um, the meaning is forever, having no end. 
And the strategy we used was, you can pause to write this down. The strategy was our background knowledge. We actually didn't use the glossary or anything. We really just thought about what we knew already about this word. Okay, let's keep going. In the beginning, there was no space and no time. Everything was squeezed under together under incredibly high pressure and temperature. Then, more than 10 billion years ago, the universe suddenly exploded into being. Scientists called this the Big Bang. Matter was formed and was carried outward by the blast. And time, as we know it, began. After the explosion, the universe was small and very hot. Then, as the universe expanded, it cooled, and small particles of matter combined to form hydrogen and helium gases. Over billions of years, these cooling gases produced all of the universe and all of us. Even today, we can see galaxies exploding with energy produced by the Big Bang. This computer-enhanced photo shows radio waves streaming from a hot spot in a cosmic jet of gases shooting out from the galaxy. So cosmic was another word that we predicted. So let's see if we can figure out the meaning and let's do this. So I'm gonna start by checking the glossary and cosmic is there. You can pause and write it down. A word used to describe the universe or anything vast or large. So let's go back and reread the sentence so we make sure that we understand cosmic. So this computer enhanced photo shows radio waves streaming out from a hot spot in a cosmic jet of gases shooting out from a distant galaxy. So since that is, so that can tell me that this is very large. It's something really large and vast. That jet of gases. Okay, good job. Make sure you pause if you need to and add to your chart. Okay, let's read another page. The universe is still expanding as a result of the Big Bang. Galaxies speed away from one another, some traveling thousands of miles per second. Will the universe continue to expand forever? In billions of years, will the stars and galaxies begin to blink out as they lose energy? Will only dying stars and galaxies be left, surrounded by empty space? Perhaps the universe will slow down and finally stop expanding. Will it then begin to pull back together to end in a big crunch and another big bang? So on this page, we're going to focus on the word expanding, but I also see it as expand, expanding, as expanding there. So let's check the glossary. Do, do, do. No expanding. Let's come back. So it says the universe is still expanding. They speed away from each other. Um, so uh, when I use my background knowledge and the context clues, I think that expanding means to get larger, to get bigger, because I see that if they are going out, they're getting, if they're speeding away from each other, that universe is getting bigger and bigger. So let's write as our definition to make larger or to get bigger. We used context clues and background knowledge for that. Okay, let's do one more. From Earth, we can look into space and study the universe with telescopes and other instruments. The moon is Earth's nearest neighbor in space, only about a quarter of a million miles away. That's very close in space, almost next door. Still, it's very far compared to the distances between places on Earth's surface. You have to travel around the Earth 10 times in order to match the distance from the Earth to the moon. The sun, the closest star to us, is over 400 times farther away from us than moon is, about 93 million miles. Um, I'm gonna stop because I keep thinking I'm connecting to the, um, our, the black hole is not a whole book. And I think that page did that page that showed us all the zeros in trillions and billions and all of that and showed us the thing that helps me understand this page even more. The nearest star after our sun is much farther away than that. 
But measuring the distance between stars and planets in miles is like measuring the distance around the world in inches. We measure the distance to the stars in light years. The distance it travels in one year, which is close to six trillion miles. A spaceship speeding at 10 miles per second would take would still take more than 70,000 years to get to Alpha Centura, the nearest star after the sun, a distance of 4.3 light years or 25 trillion miles. So let's go ahead. The author gave us the word right here. Um, but I also, it's also in the dictionary. A lot of times, in, I mean, in the glossary, a lot of times in the glossary are those scientific words from the book. So let's go ahead and write our um, definition, the distance that light travels in one year. So pause, write that. And then you're going to write that we used the strategy of reading, um, I would almost say context clues because it was just a right there, told us right there. Okay, so we'll finish this book later. I want you to go and complete your exit slip and then do some read to self so that you can practice finding unfamiliar words in your own books. Bye guys.